Drew Gillum about to take the stage tonight and speak on something that uh, I think it's fair to say no one thought would happen. Perhaps he did think it would happen, though. He sensed that the energy was on his side, the momentum clearly on his side uh, in the last 48 hours. Let's listen in live to Andrew Gillum. waiting on them. It just shows once again that polls cannot predict turnout and you can't really capture a surge at the end of a campaign. But a lot of people wait till the end to make up their mind who they're going to vote for and whether they're going to vote. Let's listen into what Andrew Gillum All right. Are y'all ready to put for the blue? I, um, I got to tell you all, I am, um, I got to tell you all, I am overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there, were, there were just a few people, just a few people, who said that this moment would not be possible. A few. And then there were, and then there were, and then there were a few more. believe that this thing was possible. <laughs> I realize, I realize, I realize that for some, they are just tuning into the possibility of what this means for all of us, right? Some. There's some. And I want you to know, as I have said, as I moved all across the state of Florida, that this thing is not about me. It never has been, and it never will be. This race is about every last single one of us, right? Those of us, those of us in this room, uh, those of us outside of this room, those of us who voted for me, those who did not vote at all, those who couldn't vote for me because they may be Republicans. <laughs> but you want to know something? I want to be their governor too. Right? I want to be their governor too. Because, because our story, our story, as y'all have heard me say so many times over the course of this race, our story uh, for me, began down in Richmond Heights and Miami-Dade County to my mother, Frances, who's here with me, who was a school bus driver, and my daddy, Charles, and my daddy, Charles, growing up, who was a construction worker. In fact, when my father didn't have construction work to do, you would find him on a street corner selling fruits or vegetables. On Saturday morning, he was set up uh, his food stand and his flower stand across the street from the cemetery and sell flowers to bereaved families. Between my mother and father, they are the best examples of hard work that I know to this day. They're the ones. They, they are the ones who have taught me what persistence is. Before I could define the terms of the word, I knew what it meant not to quit. I knew what it was to persevere. I knew what it meant to silence and quiet the haters, right? The naysayers. I love you back. I love you back. But because of their example, uh, it instilled in me a quality of hard work that I'll never forget. As the fifth of seven kids and the first of my siblings to graduate from high school and the first to graduate from college, you can't tell anybody in our family we don't know what it means to see intergenerational poverty interrupted at the hands of a good public education. It is, it is those very same GHS, my high school. It's those, it's those very same public school teachers who poured into me who told me I could when I thought I couldn't. Who told me that I could go further even when I thought I had reached my limits. It was those teachers 
who made it possible for me to go to college at the Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. Damn you. I can't, I can't thank, I can't thank, I cannot thank, I cannot thank enough my Florida a and University family who have held me up all throughout this race. But I also, I also can't hesitate to thank those people who didn't know me from Adam Cat, who as I traveled around the state, they took hold of our vision and our mission and our plans for a, for a state that makes room for all of us. Not just the well-healed and the well-connected, but all of us. And I sincerely believe that what is going to deliver us to victory in November is the fact that there are everyday hardworking people in this state who believe, who believe, who believe that they deserve a voice in our government too, and we're going to give it to them. We're going to give it to them. It, the point has never been lost on me that my name on the ballot is simply a vessel. It's simply, it's simply the name. But what is underneath that name are all the issues that we care so deeply about. What's beneath my name is the belief that we ought to pay teachers what they are worth for doing the most difficult job that exists on earth. What is beneath my name is our belief that our public education system and our public tax dollars ought to be used for the public education system to educate and lift all kids. What is beneath my name, what is behind and beneath my name is a belief, a very deep and passionate belief that anybody who works a full-time job, who gets up every day of the week, who spend 40 hours full time giving themselves in their life into their profession and to their work. It is my belief that they ought to earn a wage that they can live on and not be paid poverty wages as they render service into people into this state. What I also believe is that folks ought to be able to work one job, not two or three, but one full time job as a way to make ends meet. What is beneath my name is the belief that we deserve a governor who actually believes in science. <laughs> actually believes in science. Who is going to arrest back control of our Department of Environmental Protection and make it mean something again. Where we have clean air to breathe, clean water to drink, oceans that are not contaminated with red tide and blue-green algae suffocating off our sea life. There's not a profit margin in the state of Florida that ought to be able to rob us of those elements of clean water, clean air, and good oceans. What is beneath my name is a belief that we have to treat health care in this state like a right and not a privilege. I believe that. And it begins by expanding Medicaid for over 700,000 of the most medically needed people in this state. You can also rest assured that when I'm governor of the state of Florida, if the president decides to send us $2.4 billion to build high-speed rail across the I-4 corridor, we're going to bring that money right here into the state of Florida. Right? Right? Because the truth is, is that these aren't Republican or Democratic issues. The job of the governor of the state of Florida is to do what is in the best interest of the people of the state of Florida. I look forward to being that governor. Because I know that beneath my name is also a desire by the majority of people in this state to see real criminal justice reform take hold in the state of Florida. The kind of criminal justice reform that allows people who make a mistake to be able to redeem themselves from that mistake, return to society, have their right to vote, but also have their right to work, to earn a good wage. You all, this is, this is, this is 
Not my moment, this is our moment. This is our moment. We could not be here today were it not for the struggle, the contributions, the hard work, the organizing, the self-organizing, the folks who when we went into places and we didn't have flyers to hand out. I went back a week later and they had made their own flyers, right? The places, the places where we had no volunteer organization, people began to self-organize and volunteer. We're in this place because of the everyday people of this state, and I can't go any further without at least acknowledging that I'm here because I'm buoyed up on both my left and my right side. My rib, uh, the wind beneath my wings. The woman, the woman who makes me smile just a little bit wider. The woman who, the woman who, in my absence, has been an amazing mother, an amazing partner, and y'all, she's gonna be an amazing first lady for the state of Florida. My wife, my wife. I love you. I love you, baby. I love you. I love you. We, we. We, we together, we together with all of you, over the next several months, are gonna make our way all across the state of Florida to red counties, to blue counties, to purple counties, and we're going to unite this state in ways that are unparalleled in the history of the state of Florida. We're going to bring people together not off of our superficial differences, race, color, sexual orientation, who we choose to love, right? Those are not going to be our dividing lines. What's going to bring us together is our common and shared belief that regardless of where you come from, regardless of what your mother or your father did for a profession, regardless of what side of the tracks you live on, that every single Floridian ought to have their equal and fair shot at the American dream. But what we're also going to do, what we're also going to do over these next several months is we're going to make clear to the rest of the world that the dark days that we've been under coming out of Washington, that, that, that the derision and the division that has been coming out of our White House. That right here in the state of Florida, we are going to remind this nation of what is truly the American way. What is truly the American way. Which simply is that you can start from the bottom, Richmond Heights, South Dade County, and make your way literally to the top of this state. and be of service to all people, have a message of love, of unity, of connection, of common sense, of decency, of what is right and not what is wrong. And that message is big enough, it's wide enough, it's deep enough to hold all of us, right? It is. And so in the words of my grandmother, who growing up used to regularly anoint my head with oil, she would say a blessing over us, a mantra, if you will. She would say, boy, go to school. Mind your teachers. Bring, get lit your lesson. And one day bring that education home. She would say, she would say, bring it home for your little brother and your little sister who don't know what it is yet. Bring it home for that little boy who you play with down the street. God knows where he's going to end up. Bring it home for your mama and your daddy who get up every day to go out there and work on somebody else's job. To keep a roof over your head and clothes on your back and food on the table. Bring it home. As I've said time and time again, I didn't always know what my grandmother was communicating to me. But I would come to learn that what she was saying was, baby, it ain't just about you. That it's not even just about your brother and your sister. It's not just about your friend down the street. It's about all of us.
There was a belief that if I went far in life, we would all go far in life. That if I did good, we would all do good. Well, Florida, y'all know what? We got to bring that sense of community and collection and collectivism back to the state of Florida. That the way the state of Florida does good, the way of the state of Florida to be a leader again, is not for us to pray for somebody else's defeat or demise, but for us to figure out a way that we can create a boat that all of us can ride in because I truly believe that a rising tide does lift our boats. And you want to know something. Right here in the state of Florida tonight, we have shown the rest of the country that we can be the David in the situation where there's a Goliath. That you can be the non-millionaire. You can come from working class family. And you can make your way to the top. Well, y'all, let me be very clear. Let me be very clear. We've got a few months to go. And we've got to redouble our efforts as we go forward. We've got to get out there and organize like we've never organized before. We've got to get out there and bring all the people that we can to our side. We've got to do that, y'all, not by being hateful, not by being derisive or divisive, but by reminding Florida of who we are and by reminding the country that, you know what, the American way still lives, and if the state of Florida has to show the rest of the world, then let it begin right here tonight. Let it start right here in the state of Florida. As I conclude, I want to give a personal word of appreciation to all four of my opponents. Uh, they were worthy opponents. They all had their own visions for the future of this state. And now it is time for all five of us to come together and to work together, to work together to move our state forward. I have already spoken with Chris King, Phil Levine, and Gwen Graham this evening, who both, who both, who both offered their words of respect and also their words of support. And so now, so now, y'all, we've got to do everything that we can because we're on the way home, but we ain't brought it all the way home yet. All right? So what we've got to do now is commit ourselves to bringing it home, not for me, not for just those of us in this room, but for the names that we can't call and the faces that we can't recognize, we're going to bring this thing home. Y'all, tonight, tonight, tonight as the mayor of Florida's capital city, I, as the mayor of Florida's capital city, I humbly accept the Democratic nomination. <laughs>